Just lift up your hand wherever you are. Begin to declare the goodness of God in all circumstances, in all situations. Bless the name of the Lord for his goodness, for his mercy. In all circumstances, lift up your voice and bless the name of the Lord. And bless the name of the Lord. And bless the name of the Lord. Father, we thank you. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. That this day that we have set aside to praise you. That our lives will never be the same again. As we praise you, we are raised up. Amen. As we praise you, all attacks are erased. Amen. Father, thank you for today. Amen. Lord, thank you for today. Amen. That I can sing your praise. Amen. That I can bless your name. Amen. That I can worship your name. Amen. If I have a witness in the house, shout a big hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Isn't Jesus wonderful? Isn't Jesus powerful? Isn't Jesus glorious? Somebody say, My Jesus is the Lord of all. He is all powerful, all glorious. And all merciful. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Please take your seat. I want to welcome each and every one of you to this service today. And I pray that the word of God will bless your life. Remember the reason why we are called Christians is because the word of God works in us word. Praise the Lord. You must get the word. Because if you lack the word, you are coming is in vain. Praise the Lord. And I know that from November, and November is next Sunday. Praise the Lord. And we'll announce it on Sunday. If you don't have your Bible when you are coming to a church, stay outside. Praise the Lord. It's very simple. If you go to offices, they make rules. Daniel, did you hear me? I'm glad you did. Praise the Lord. Except you are a first timer. From, from November after Super Sunday, if you are coming to this church and you don't have a Bible, you will not come in. Amen. A doctor goes with his what? That's what they call the stethoscope, right? He goes with it, right? A carpenter goes with what? <laughs> Electrician goes with his tester, right? What should a Christian carry? Do you agree with me? If you don't have your Bible, after 3rd November, when you come, you will not come in. Because we are not sure what you are coming to do. Amen. Amen. If you cannot open the word, then your life is not open yet. Praise the Lord. 
I have a wonderful treasure, the gift of God without measure. We shall travel together, my Bible land. One more time. I have a wonderful treasure, the gift of God without measure. We My Put it like this on your chest. Say this is my life giver. This is my, life giver. This is my peace. This is my, peace. This, is my best friend. this is my best friend. This is my companion. This is my companion. I, will never do it. I will never do without it. Lift it up and say, Jesus, thank you. Jesus, thank you. Jesus, thank you. Say, Jesus, thank you. Praise the Lord. So, I know everybody can afford a Bible. Amen? Because even those that does not have work, they carry phone. Some carry two. So, please, we will give you the grace of today, Sunday, next Wednesday, by the tenth, by the tenth of Sunday of November, if you are coming to this church, you don't have Bible. No. No. Praise the Lord. Is that okay? Yes, sir. The congregation didn't answer. Is that okay? Yes, sir. I am trying to help you. I am trying to help you. It is compulsory for us to have it. Amen. And today we've been fasting and praising God. And by the way, Friday is the first day of the month of November. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And what time is our first day service of the new month? 7 a.m. We will be here by the grace of God. To give thanks to God for the month of October. To give him praise for the month of November. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Even if you cannot come, you can connect. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And when you connect, when you connect, just be as if you are here. Because the anointing is the same. Praise the Lord. In Ephesians chapter 2, just briefly, I want to, because today we are just praising God. I will be doing that since morning. I will continue to do that. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11. Paul says something to us. He says, therefore, <laughs> Paul says, therefore, remember, ah, he says, remember, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11. Amen? He says, therefore, remember that formerly, formerly, life before Christ, you who are Gentiles by birth and called uncircumcised by those who call themselves the circumcision, which is done in the body of human hands, Verse 12, he says, remember again that at that time when you were not born again, remember the time when you were not saved. He said, you were separate from Christ. You were excluded from citizenship in Israel. And you were foreigners to the covenant of the promise. You were without hope and without God in the world. He said, verse 13, but now. Somebody say, now. now. Say, somebody say, now. now. Now means you. Now. Amen. He said, but now, in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away. Ah, 
I don't know if anybody is excited. He said, but now in Christ, you who once were far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Shout hallelujah. He said, for he himself is our peace. He is our peace. Who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility. If any man be in Christ, therefore, there is no condemnation. If you are in Christ, Paul said, remember. He said again, remember. Why did he have to remind us? Because man is likely to forget what his greatest gift is. The greatest gift is not signs and wonders. The greatest gift is not healing the sick. No. The greatest gift is not car or house or land. No, that's not the greatest gift. The greatest gift is that you were once once a sinner, once a foreigner, once an outcast. He said, by the blood, we have been pulled. The blood pulled us in. If you cannot praise God for that, there's nothing else God will do that you will praise him. If you cannot give thanks that before you were a reject and now you are a commander of signs and wonders. If you cannot praise him for that, no, no, no. There's nothing else you will praise God for. And that's why Paul said to us, remember, in verse 11, in verse 12, he said, remember what you used to be, what you used to go through. Amen. Many have forgotten. No, many have forgotten. You have forgotten the captivity and the bondage you used to go through. Some people say when they were small, they used to see things, they used to dream, and it comes to pass and all that. They will say it. He said, when they were small, it used to be like that. They don't know what it was. They thought it's the Holy Spirit. No, it's familiar spirit. Because you can't have the Holy Ghost talking through you, walking through you when you are not born again. Praise the Lord. It was the dominion of familiar spirit. Walking in you, walking through you, controlling you. You will say things and you will say it. And some people merchandise it. And so they become they become captive to familiar spirit. And when you got born again, it ceased. The Lord stopped the familiar spirit from walking in you and walking through you. And now he gave you his spirit. Hallelujah. He gave you something greater than familiar spirit. Yes. He gave you the spirit of Christ. He gave you the mind of Christ. Remember, the familiar spirit used to rule over you. In the night, you will have nightmares. In the night, you will have terrible dreams. Now, you don't dream like that anymore. You have peace when you sleep. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And you can give thanks. That's what Paul says. Remember that before salvation, you used to be a prisoner. But remember, before salvation, you used to be an outcast. But now, who are you? You are a royal priesthood. You are chosen by God. You are Christ, Christ walking on earth. Praise the Lord. You don't know that Christianity means representation of Christ. You will become what Christ was on earth. Amen. Amen. And Paul is bringing it to our remember. He said, remember, life used to be tough without Christ. Amen. And that is why we are now citizens of Zion. Are you hearing me? We are not Nigerian citizens. We are citizens of Zion. And that is why what troubles Nigerians cannot trouble us. Amen? Amen? Because it is for Nigerians. It is not for Christians. But you can buy it if you want to. You can buy it. You can acquire it. But if you reject it, and that is why when there is hunger in the land, it is for Nigerians, it is not for Christians. When there is all manner of upheaval, economic downcast, it's not for you. But you know what? You bought it. You took it. You claim it. Let me tell you, there is no land without problem. There is no nation without trouble. But what is most important? Most important is that Christ in you 
is the hope of glory. Not the continent where you live. Not the nation where you live. But the Bible says it is Christ in us that is the hope of greatness. And I wish that Christians can connect to it. You go to school. You said you are not good in mathematics and you become like that. Who told you? You told yourself. You hate the subject. You hate the lecturer. Then what do you expect? No, what do you expect? What do you expect? You do the same thing in church. You like the praise and worship, but you don't like the pastor. Are you okay? Are you okay? You don't like mathematics. You don't like physics. You don't like chemistry. You don't like biology. What do you like? Religious studies. Religious studies. Social studies. Physical education. That's your best. What's your best subject? Physical studies. I pity the person paying your school fees. Should take you to a mechanic workshop and keep you there. Praise the Lord. It's a fight, the good fight of faith. Amen. Amen. Fight the good fight of faith. Do you want to be successful in Christ Jesus? Fight! Because the moment you want to be successful, the devil wants you to be a failure. Then the question is, whose report do you believe? But Paul says, but now in Christ Jesus, now in Christ Jesus, if before mathematics was a challenge, in Christ you become a mathematician. Before, if physics used to be a problem, now you become a physician. Or a physicist, as they are called. Praise the Lord. What you used to run away from, you run after it now. Amen? Why should you allow poverty to embrace you? No. Why should you allow poverty to... Listen. Listen. Spiritual illiteracy is a result of physical poverty. Are you hearing me? I wish somebody would catch this to them. Spiritual illiteracy is is the main reason for physical poverty. You can go to church and not know anything. And that is why I'm saying that if you're in this church, because this is a Bible-believing church. So if you're Bible-believing and you don't have the Bible, what do you believe? What do you believe? All you know is Psalm 23. Even that you struggle with it, you don't understand it. What is Psalm 23? The Lord is... Give me time. The Lord is... Mm. The Lord is my... I don't even understand that word. You have been a Christian for 15 years. And you are doing... The Lord is... The Lord is... The Lord is... How many verses of scriptures do you know? Mm. Genesis chapter 1. Verse 1. Give it to me. They say God created the... Heaven and earth. Who said? I don't know. Did I talk him? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now, so did they talk him? They say God created. Do you believe it? Me, I think so. Because everybody, they talk him. If you want to avoid poverty as a Christian, get Christian education, get Bible education. Listen, listen, and listen to me very well. I want to read one scripture, one scripture, just one that must make you. Hebrews. <clears throat> Hebrews 11. And I want everybody to open it and project it, please. 
Hebrews 11 verse 3. I want to see it projected. Praise the Lord. So if you don't have a Bible, you can look here and behold. He says, by faith, we understand that the wars, the wars, not, not, so it's not talking about physical war. He said the wars were framed by the word of God so that the prosperity you are looking for are not made by the hard work you produce. Is that what is written there? But let me read it for you. <laughs> so that they think, because that got your attention, isn't it? So that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. You can see a prosperous man, isn't it? You can see a car, a house, bought by somebody. The Bible said all the things you see in terms of prosperity, the, it is not as a result of hard work. It is a result of using the word of God. He said that the words were framed. The word of prosperity can be framed by the word of God. The word of divine health, you can live without sickness and diseases. It is framed by the word of God. The word of victorious living can be framed, can be constructed by the word of God. And so if you lack the word, you are bankrupt. So spiritual illiteracy brings physical bankruptcy. If you can get the word of God into your spirit, you will be unstoppable. You will be unstoppable. We have some of you here. You are nine years, 10 years, 11 years, 12 years. You are seated here, you are looking at me. If you are here, you are from nine to 11, raise your hand. Stand on your feet. If you are from nine to 11 years, stand. Nine to 11. You, you are nine. Did you hear what I said? Are you nine years? You are. Miracle. Praise the Lord. So, all of you, you are from nine to eleven, right? Ekene, what do you want to be when you grow up? Take microphone to him. How many years are you? Eleven. You are shocked. I'm asking you, what do you want to be? Ekene, you are eleven. What do you want to be? What a shame. Give to the lady wearing yellow. What's her name? Ori. Sorry? Ori. All right. Okay. How many years are you? Eleven. Eleven. What do you want to be when you grow up? A doctor. You want to be a doctor? Yes. Praise God. Praise God. Give to a person by your side. How many years are you? Eleven. Eleven also? Ten. ten. <laughs> no problem. What do you want to be when you grow up? A teacher. You want to be a teacher? Yes. Praise God. All right. I shall take the microphone again. Ekene, you see the difference. A child is known by his deeds. It has to register in you what you want to be. Because soon it will be too late for you to know. Do you understand? You see? She wants to be a doctor. She wants to be a teacher. She's not thinking about it. She knows it. That is how you decide tomorrow. And so those that want to be a teacher or want to be a doctor, you use the word of God and say, Lord, I want to have excellence in my spirit. Lord, 
make me and give me the gift of understanding, even hard sentences that I can teach others. You know, when you have your Bible, you will read about Daniel chapter 1, Daniel chapter 2. You read it often. You read it always. I'm not asking you to read it. You read Daniel chapter 1. Read Daniel chapter 2. All right, do you understand what I'm saying? Right? Do you understand? And so, you begin to spend time in the word of God, asking God to give you that spiritual gift that will make you, when you read about Daniel, when you read about Ezra, you read about Joseph, you read about those that had excellent spirit from the word of God, and say, Lord, put what they had in me. Make me the way they were in that time. I want to be able to understand hard sentences. I want to be able to learn. Sometimes I blame parents for not encouraging their children the right way. You don't equip them. You just send them to any school. The, the devotional of last week, was it last week or 10 days ago, he says... What gift will you give to the next generation? What gift? What gift? A week last Sunday, in Europe, in a church, in a church, there was no priest. It was artificial intelligence that preached in the church. People gathered, there was no pastor. They put on the TV. I'm telling you, a week, yes, a week, Last Sunday, it happened in Europe. There was, they said there was shortage of priests. And so they have to use artificial intelligence to preach the word of God. And they were playing it on TV. I was sad. Because it was like reading something. And the priest in that church said it was good that they want to get better with it. Artificial intelligence, because there was scarcity of pastors. You know the sad thing? Parents are not encouraging their children to become pastors, to become teachers of the word. You know why? You know what you do to pastors. If Christians don't give birth to pastors, who will give birth to them? No, who will give birth to them? You can be a doctor, but you can be a pastor first. You can be a teacher, but you also be a pastor. Listen, 20, 30 years from now, where will the next pastors come from? If Jesus tarries, think about it. God forbid that you come and you sit in front of artificial intelligence. You know, ministry is spiritual. Artificial intelligence can never be spiritual. He can read and narrate what you wrote, but cannot minister to you. Praise the Lord. Change your mind. Get the word of God in your spirit. Embrace the word of God. Learn the word of God because excellence as a Christian is in the word. Are you hearing me? Young people, are you hearing me? Please sit down. God bless you. Clap for them. Learn, learn from the word of God. Learn from the word of God. And the word of God will change your life. Whatever you do, when the spirit of God comes upon you, you will do it better. Whatever you do, when the anointing comes upon you, you will do it better. My prayer is that you will do better. But it takes it takes his word to produce excellence in you. If you sell tomatoes, or you sell onion, or you sell crayfish, your character will make you the best seller in that market. 
you pray for your customers. Even those that have not come, you pray for those that will come. And so when a customer comes to you, oh, good morning, sir, good morning, my God bless you, man. How are you? Welcome. And you treat with diligence. And your product is quality product. You may be expensive, but you are quality. Don't worry about the customers because the Lord will drive them to you. But now, you want to have cheap customers. So you say cheap product, you say fake product. And you are supposed to be a Christian. Your business represents you. Your business represents your faith. So if you sell pure water, let it be quality. If you sell onion, let it be quality. Do you understand what I'm talking about? The Christian race is the race of excellence. When the anointing comes upon you, it makes you better. When you were not, listen, when you were not born again, you are a wife. Born again, it changes everything. When you were not born again, when your husband talk, you talk back. You say, what is it? Because that's the way your culture is. That is the way you have learned. In education, said uh, this is a women liberation, whatever, whatever nonsense. But when you get born again, when you get born again, you become a different kind of woman. Praise the Lord. A woman, a woman have the key to make impact in a generation. If only you will look beyond yourself. A husband, when you were not born again, you used to be like the tyrant in the house. You like to be a dictator. You dictate and that is it. When you are coming home, your children will run and disappear. Because Osama bin Laden is coming home. Even when your children look at your picture, they are shaking. You are not there. Because of the terror you carry. You enter the room, and the children will look at you. Ah, they will disappear into their room. You can't sit with your children. What? You are too busy. That's the job of your wife. You, you, be careful what you are raising. No, you don't have time for the children. What? Your job is to drop money for them. No, they have become your beggars. They become your beggars. Drop money and will go. One day they will drop you. Praise the Lord. If we don't rep represent Christ well, God will judge us for it. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Make impact with your children. We were outsiders before, but the blood of Jesus has brought us close. Brought us close to make a difference. Amen. Amen. You, you want to get married. Why? Because your mother said you should get married. That's all. That's all. Why do you want to get married? Because my mother is bothering me about it. I just want to have peace by getting married. No, you won't have peace. Check again if you should be married. Before you go and take somebody's daughter and begin to torment her. Amen. Amen. Then your mother got a wife for you. She arranged the traditional wedding. She arranged the church wedding. She bought you suit, shoe, everything. Are you getting married? Ask my mom. When a man failed to represent Christ, do you know what you become? You are worse than an unbeliever. That's what the Bible says. Praise the Lord. You must affect your children positively for tomorrow. You must build them up for tomorrow. It is a great responsibility to be a father. Greater than to be a mother. Take that responsibility serious. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Be thankful for what God has given you. 
Praise God as much as you can. Bless the name of the Lord as much as you can. Don't rule your family from your village according to your village. Rule your family from the word of God. And the word of God is very clear. Amen. Amen. Talk to your children. Ask them what their vision is. Ask your children what they want to be tomorrow. And then if you can help them to correct it, help them to correct it. Talk to your children. Talk to them about tomorrow. Talk to them about today. Don't be foolish. Don't say whatever will be, will be. No, the devil will make them to be what is not supposed to be. Praise the Lord. You are surprised that this is coming from the church. Yes, because that is the part we'll be missing. Telling people the truth. Amen. Amen. You will affect your generation. Amen. I pray that you will make a positive impact in your generation. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You will not be a non-entity. Remember that you ever lived. Yeah. Somebody will remember you. Yeah. You will make an impact that will remember you. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. I said to you, I said to you, do something that will make you to be somebody tomorrow. Yeah. The spirit is willing because no Christian ever got born again for nothing. No. Salvation can never be for nothing. You are saved for a purpose. You are saved for something. And all you need to do, key into it, and you become it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. It is not by might. It is not by power. The Bible says, by the Spirit. It is by the Spirit. And the next thing is, who are thou, O mountain, before me? I will overcome you by the Spirit. I will conquer you by the Spirit. Mathematics, I will overcome you by the Spirit. Chemistry, I will know you by the Spirit. Physics, I will know you by the Spirit. I am unstoppable. You know why? The Spirit of God is in me. And the memory of the righteous is blessed. How dare you say you don't have good memory? Can the scripture lie? But because you have not discovered where he says that the memory of the righteous is blessed, no believer should have a loss of memory. He says the memory of the righteous. Oh, ever since I discovered that scripture, it has changed my thinking. They said as you get old, you begin to forget things. God forbid. God, say God forbid. Moses was 120. What did he forget? Till he died, he was still giving them doctrines, 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 doctrines. Do till the last, he said, wait, 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 wait. He said, wait, wait, I'm going to die. He said, I'm going. Bye bye, you. Where are you going? I'm going to die. Wouldn't you like to live like that? He climbed the mountain at 120 to go and die. You, you can't climb the hill in front of the church. And you think it's normal. You think it's normal. That will change in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You didn't know it to be like this today's service you came. Amen. Amen. It can only get better. Lift up your hands. Say thank you, Jesus. I bless your name. I give you all the glory. I give you all the honor. My tomorrow surely will be better. In Jesus' mighty name. Praise the Lord.